Buy everything from red noses for a couple of dollars through to badges for five dollars. It's not a lot of money, but you can actually save a baby's life. Now that's an incredibly important thing to do. What we've done over the years is, uh, is I suppose, sold the message, made sure we know what the risks associated uh, with sudden infant death is, and of course, the race club is here supporting it. Well, this Friday is the day to uh, purchase the red noses. Thanks for talking to us, Kate. Thank you very much. Kate Carnell, the ACT Chief Minister. Red Nose Day this Friday, Nick. A great course. Thanks, Hill. Off Melbourne. Gates are back, they're off and racing now to a good sort of a start. Fluid Motion, one of the first to bounce out. Space Cash and Yokozuna's away very fast in the early stages. Gippsland Gold, Sovereign Squall settling in the first few and then Diamond Duke followed by no need. Below the 1200, Yokozuna's moved up on the outside. Space Cash boots back on the rail and they settle down in front of Diamond Duke. Sovereign Squall is up fourth on the outside of Fluid Motion. About a length away to Gippsland Gold, no need. Trust him around the outside. Two lengths to Ranch Gossip being followed by Dusty Poet and then Magnet. Further back is Brakeman on the inside of the Grey Keelan and then Shell Field and Real Zeal about four last. Off the back now, Space Cash on the rail, the leader. 700 to go, three quarters, Yokozuna. Diamond Duke travelling third, a length and a half. Further back is Fluid Motion, Sovereign Squall. Trust him three deep around that pair and then a length and a half to No Need, Keelan, Ranch Gossip. Magneto is hard ridden coming up towards the turn. So too is Dusty Poet on the inside, trailed by Gippsland Gold, Shell Field, Brakeman and Real Zeal. Into the straight now and Space Cash flattened for the run in about two lengths on Diamond Duke and Yokozuna. Sovereign Squatters under the whip in fourth placing. Then trust him, Keelan is coming down the middle of the course and no need is coming home well. Space Cash in front, a length and a half to Diamond Duke at the 200 metre mark. Space Cash is holding him for the moment and they're nicely clear from Sovereign Squad and Keelan. Space Cash kicked on Diamond Duke, has him beaten and Space Cash is coming on for a good win for Sammy Highland. Eased up, beat Diamond Duke by two lengths. Sovereign Squall third every hope. Then Keelan Land, Ranch Gossip, No Need and Magneto. Back behind those, Yokozuna, Trust Him. And a gap behind these in the field to Shell Field. And then Dusty Poet never got into it. Followed by Brakeman, Real Zeal, Fluid Motion and Gippsland Gold dropped out to last. Winner there too, Space Cash, 450, 11 Diamond Duke to pay 480, 1 Sovereign Squall, 160. Correct weight, Canberra, 2 Space Cash, 430, 180, number 11. Diamond Duke to return 420 and 1 Sovereign Squall, 170. And the treble on 692 to return $191.70. Check out the grill. From the farrier, that's still going on. Meanwhile, they start to move in. Kazaki Gold went up. Alex's Q about to come forward. The I'm a Wonder's been completed. Now that work. Merely Dancer about to come in. Victory Tree, Hopeful Dancer, Barclay, and Lucky Twist. Perfect on the outside, won the jump at the rider of Lady Lawrence's booty up on the inside to try and keep it out there. They were followed out then by Shiftway Gold, just easing back on the outside of Pim Parlor Prince, who's racing one off the fence, and Rapid Drifter pops out at the tail. Now that's perfect, gets his way in front, and he's steady by Cameron Swan and leads by three quarters of a length over Lady Lawrence, who's poking up once again to bother him. On in third place, then on the outside came Pim Parlor Prince, followed further back then by Rapid Drifter, and a length off last is Shiftway Gold. Short of 600 metres left to run now, and with the mouth wide open, that's perfect, is the leader. By a head now to the good of Lady Lawrence, who's working closer. Pimpala Prince is tracking them into the straight, followed further back then by Rapid Drifter, urged along by Darren Beeman, and last into the straight is Shiftway Gold. On the outside, Lady Lawrence runs to the front of the 200 metre mark, but here's Pimpala Prince joining in down the outside now. That's perfect, is fighting back on the inside. Lady Lawrence, though, is holding Pimpala Prince at this stage. Here he comes now, Pimpala Prince. Lady Lawrence is fighting something, but Pimpala Pimpala Prince is too good, and Pimpala Prince scores over Lady Lawrence, third, that's perfect. Next over the line then came Rapid Drifter, and last of all was Shiftway Gold. One Pimpala Prince, 190 and 120, six Lady Lawrence to pay 250, two, that's perfect, no third. Pimpala Prince, Glen Boss first. Lady Lawrence, a mighty cheeky performance from that mare. She's run second, ridden by Lenny Beasley, and the third will go to, that's perfect, number two. The winner, Pim Parlour Prince, should pay $1.80 for the win and $1.20 for the place. And uh, how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, so there will be a second dividend for number six, Lady Lawrence. She should pay $2.40. There are insufficient starters for a third-place dividend. The winner, number one, Pim Parlour Prince, 
is a bay four-year-old gelding by Yellow Prince, noted speed sire, but gee, he's a prolific sire, this fellow Yellow Prince, from uh, Playhouse Song, raced by RJ and Mrs. C.Y. Cruz, trained by Darren Smith at Broad Meadow, and ridden by Glenn Boss. There go the numbers now, one, six, and two, they're official. Second place goes to number six, Lady Lawrence, a four-year-old grey mare by Sir Lawrence from Simone's Pride, raced by A.C. Farrell, trained by Pat Farrell at Musselbrook and ridden by Lenny Beasley. And in third place, number three, or number, is it number two? Number two, that's right, that's perfect. By Yates from Perfect Dancer, a five-year-old bay gilding, raced by R. Ed and Mrs. Seal, Fraser and G.J. South, Cameron Swan uh, from Max Lees. But the and the early part is... Thanks very much, Nick. These runners are going to the barrier for the running of race number six, the Red Nose Day Class 4 Handicap. I'll be certainly buying a Red Nose on Friday, but we all have Red Noses at the moment because it is snowing in the nearby hills, they do tell us, Michael. Indeed, it is snowing in the Brinda Bellis Air Hilton. Uh, nevertheless, race six on the card here. The uh, good money on course here for number eight, Eurodancer. Been very well supported. It was, it was around about yours for theirs with the bookmakers. Well into the red now with the, with the bookmakers. Trained by Gary Kirk, uh, Greg Farrer on board. Well drawn in barrier three. Uh, racing very consistently up in uh, uh, Ranwick and, uh, and, and Rose Hill. A drop, significant drop in grade this afternoon. On the limit, this three-year-old. He was a good winner here back in late March. Uh, looks very hard to beat. Looks great, this filly. Uh, this colt, I should say. Hardest to beat. Number three, Festino. Been racing very consistently. A uh, good second at Nara recently behind Moringo Bay. Another one well drawn in barrier one and does have pace. And number five, uh, Speedy Groucho. Uh, race, another one who uh, looks well in the yard, this mare. She's another one that'll go forward and that's the place to be this afternoon. So summing up, Hilton, eight from three and five. All right, Michael, best of luck with those. You're tipping very well. And uh, we've got a look at the market here with 5.20 for Farzak, number one. New to uh, the Frank Cleary stable. It's $10 Festino, doubling 11. Speedy Groucho, 5.58 Euro Dancer, $2.30. They're set at Chuka. 1,600 metres the journey. Here he is at Canberra. Thank you, Nick. Moving in well for this race. The scratching is number two, Marinella's Gift. 1,200 metres the journey. Now, Sylvania Boy about to move along. Doubling out of line. Now moving in is Festino. And that will leave Farzak. Festino drawn the inside of the line. Stands well. Speedy Groucho. Now waiting on Farzak to move along. And a doubling. Royal Commission has gone up. Eurodancer. It's the Red Nose Day Class 4. Now doubling about to move along and that will leave Farzak the last one. Pustino stands up well. So too does San Reno. Party Punch, Sylvania Boy, Speedy Groucho, doubling. Is still out. So it's doubling and uh, Farzak. The two out of the stalls. Eurodancer settles down well for the Red Nose Day Class 4. Now doubling goes up, waiting on Farzak, trained by Frank Cleary, Peter Wiggins in the saddle, San Reno, the replacement rider, John Nesbitt, Baron Saxby stands up well. Now Farzak will go up to complete the line, goes in, San Reno settles down, party punch, Baron Saxby, the line is set, over there at the 1200 metres, stand by for a start. Festino drawn an inside gate. Off they go and Festino down towards the inside got away well. San Reno went back to the tail of the field. Speedy Groucho is driving through and Baron Saxby. Eurodance is not too far away. Nora's party punch followed then by up on the outside, gaining a bit of ground was Royal Commissioner as they sort themselves out and race towards that first turn. And the leader was Speedy Groucho racing inside the 800. Uh, Eurodance is second, followed by Party Punch third. Down towards the inside, gaining ground was Festino, followed further back in the field, doubling a break behind those, the Grey Sylvania boy. Getting back in the field was Farzak as they race up towards the turn. Royal Commissioner back towards the tail and San Reno last of all, but up towards the turn. And the leader was Speedy Groucho, Eurodance on the outside running on stoutly in behind those Baron Sacks beyond the rails further back behind those in the field then came party punch and a long break behind those then Royal Commissioner but in the straight though with about 300 to go and Eurodancer raced up and dashed to the lead Eurodancer's nicely clear into the clear running on was Farzak followed further back in the field then running on fairly well down the outside was doubling but as they raced inside the 200 metre mark Farzak on the outside is coming at Eurodancer and Farzak got up on the line Farzak has beaten Eurodancer 
Close for third, Speedy Groucho, a Royal Commissioner. In behind those in the field came Doubling, followed then by San Reno, well back in the field with Party Punch. A long break behind those then, Baron Saxby, who was back towards the tail of the field, and Festino, one of the last to cross the line, just up ahead of those, Sylvania Boy. Farzak, the winner. Ridden by Peter Wiggins, trained by Frank Cleary. And uh, to return on the New South Wales TAB, 490 and $1.90. Euro Dancer will get second, number eight. Kicked away in the straight, but the winner finished far too strongly. Farzak, trained by Frank Cleary. A six-year-old brown gilding by half iced out of Deer Hunter. And uh, it got up on the line to beat Euro Dancer, ridden by Greg Farrer. Euro Dancer, trained by Gary Kirkup, is by City Dancer out of Ancilla. And uh, close for third. We'll have the third number for you in a moment. Now the time for the race, 111.33. 111.33 and the last 636.37. We'll have more from Canberra in just a moment. OK, thank you very much, Tony. <clears throat> yeah, won the winner for uh, Frank Cleary. Late mile at Sandown. Number two, Carla's Voice for Lincoln Coffee. Race six, number two is the late mile from Rod. And the early part is no name, running to the lead early. Regal Date, the stable mate. Carter's voice going up on the outside into a prominent role. And they're followed by Dance Party settling fourth from Belch. And then came Silver Stream, Chicago Baby. Mrs. Krause easing back. Minya Yang just inside her. And towards the end of the field, Stimulator dropping out to last. And Grey Beauty next to last getting up on the fence. Turning out of the straight now. No name, the leader from Carter's voice on the outside. Dance Party prominent third on the inside. Regal Date about a neck away fourth on the outside. A length and a half to Belch travelling fifth on the rail Silver's Dream is outside at about a length away in the field Min Ye Yang Chicago Baby on the outside of Grey Beauty and then a break of two lengths to Mrs Krause and a length and a half to the Stimulator at the back of the field into the back 1400 metres to go now no name ahead in front of Carter's voice the pace steady a length and a half away Dance Party getting a good trail on the inside three quarters away then Regal Date at least two lengths further back in the field is Belch on the inside being followed by Min Ye Yang out wide and Silver's Dream between horses a length and a half then Chicago baby she's being followed by Grey Beauty on the rail two and a half to Mrs Krause and two lengths to Stimulator running along the back now 1,000 meters left to go no name the leader half a length to Carter's voice a length and a half to Dance Party half a length away fourth in the race then Regal Date Minya Yang traveling three wide one and a half to Belch on the rail they're followed by Silver's Dream and then further back is uh, Grey Beauty on the inside of Chicago baby spotting the leader eight third last and they're trailed by Mrs Krause and Stimulator is last of all coming down the side with uh, 650 metres to go. It's on the inside, no name. Carter's voice the outside. Min Yang goes up to them but hard ridden third. Just behind them, Regal Date Dance Party to rail. Silver's Dream is next and Mrs Krause has made a quick dash around the outside and then the Stimulator coming wide. Carter's voice takes the lead into the straight from no name. Min Yang wider out, Dance Party next and then Regal Date between runners. On the outside, Mrs. Krause and the Stimulator. It's Carter's voice, no name. Minya Yang on the outside. Silver's Dream getting through in the run between them now. Silver's Dream has gone to the lead at the 200. From Carter's voice coming again. Silver's Dream and Carter's voice fighting it out. Carter's voice again takes the lead on the outside. Carter's voice and Carter's voice ahead to Silver's Dream. Well headed, but it's fought back to win. Two links to Minya Yang third. Uh, then Belch and followed uh, Chicago Baby on the outside. And then the Stimulator, who just died on a finishing run a bit. Next dance party and then Mrs. Krause, Grey Beauty, followed by Regal Date and No Name. Number two, Carla's Voice to pay five fifty one ninety four Silver's Dream, one eighty. Number ten, Minya Yang, $9.90. Repeating correct weight can, beret six on one, eight and ten. To Carla's Voice in Melbourne, five sixty one ninety. Number four, Silver's Dream to pay $2.10 and number ten, Minya Yang to pay $10.40. <laughs> Getting up there for Frank Cleary. He's pretty happy uh, for Ricky Stewart and the team there. They're part owners of Farzak, the previous winner. Eurodancer running second. His help. It was a very good win, Nick. Yes, uh, coming home well. Farzak first up from a spell and uh, more in store for that horse. Riley Saxton's ridden a double here today. He won race three and race four. The fourth event some putters uh, no doubt would uh, rather forget. But having a look through the form, it seems as though Riley's got some good uh, chances to come on the program and he joins us now. Rolly Rio Amber is a horse who uh, has had 19 goes at the distance for 12 minor placings, but you haven't ridden the horse in any previous preparation. You've been on the horse this time in. She looks well placed here for mine. Uh, yeah, I'm, I like the track today. Um, I've ridden her on the wets in town. Uh, she sort of gets through it, but 
she hasn't been able to, I reckon, come to her best. Um, if she's going to win today, it's got to be today. So, And uh, I give the good track going to be a big help. Well, she's won six from 36 starts on this course with 19 minor placings. Her win-loss ratio is probably not that good, but is she the sort of horse that has that will to win? Uh, she's, oh, she, well, when you look at her, all the placings she's run, you think, oh, she just doesn't want to win. But um, this, like I said, this is my first prep on her, and right. she's a seven-year-old mare. Honest as they come, you know, but I, I, I've been saying in training, I just would like to have a go on her on a good track. You know, if she gets beat, well, there's another placing, but she's bringing checks in, and they, mm. you can't be unhappy with that, so... Yeah. Um, Today could well be the well, day back on the top day. of the ground. It's a good field, it's a good field, but, you know, you never know. Now, the uh, talk of the track is about this very impressive uh, newcomer, a four-year-old named Sir Avalanche in race eight, number two, four starts for two wins and one third. I noticed that uh, uh, P Malin's been on board the horse lately, but you're on uh, on top today. Yeah, well, uh, he's a good mate of mine, Peter Malin, but he had a tragedy um, in track work. He come off a horse, fell awkwardly, and he's uh, now he's out for six months. He snapped his tibia and fibia, oh, no. snapped them in half, so he's going to be out for six months. And fortunately, I got the ride, and uh, hopefully I can do something with him. He's going to be, he'll be something to watch for in town uh, next prep. Well, it looks like a good race, the eighth, with a clash against uh, Kingston Shores, a very good horse. Oh, well, you know, there's always horses, and, you know, you got to beat, you know, I, I don't doubt, I, I believe the horse can win, but there's also another ten horses in there you got to beat too, so that's it. Well, I wait till I pass that line, and then I'll say I'm the winner. Well, you've passed the line first twice today, and... I see no reason why the success can't continue. Good, good luck. Oh, thank you very much, Hilton. Good on you. Riley Saxon there, one of the top riders in the district. As we take you to Fairfield for race number seven, here's Dale Walker. Ready to get but they're off and racing now in the sixth and on the outside recalcitrance probably one of the best ones away now shiny hayes took a bit of an angle after jumping and wants to veer out off the track maybe that's intentional from the jockey but omar zam the big gray goes to the front as they start to sort themselves out over recalcitrance into third spot runs our best man over mr stanimar racing fourth and inclined to pull somewhat three or four lengths further back then came shiny hayes on the outside of go steve and the old stage of penthouse drops out at the tail 1400 meters left to travel now and Omar Zam is the leader. Mr. Stanimar, not content with the pace, goes up on the outside and pulls his way to the front now. And he takes over as they run to the back. Mr. Stanimar on top leads by two lengths on Omar Zam. A similar distance further back then came Recalcitrance. He's settled nicely. On the inside fence, just poking up on the inside, there is our best man being trailed then by Shining Hayes. Two lengths off then came Go Steve. And last of all was Pentas. 1,000 metres left to travel as they go to the back now. And Mr. Stanimar leads them. He leads by a length and three quarters over Omar Zam. In third spot on the inside, our best man now keeping recalcitrance, one off the fence. A length and a half further afield, then came Shining Hayes. He's been specked. Next to last then came on the inside goes Stephen Penthouse is last. He must be about eight lengths from the leader. And that leader as they race down and approach the 600 metre point is Mr. Stanimar. Now he's had it all his own way in front so far, Mr. Stanimar. The grey Omar Zam is gradually working closer now, however. Into third spot runs our best man, followed by recalcitrance. The rider Larry Cassidy starts to get busy. Shining Hayes is taking off and putting in a run from Go Stephen Penthouse last into the straight, however, and Omar Zam has cleared them. He's cleared out by two lengths on Shining Hayes, who's running home pretty strongly. Our best man between runners, and then they were followed further back by Penthouse. Recalcitrance is going to run nearer to last than first, but it's the grey. Omar Zam in front. Shining Hayes trying to get to him on the outside. Omar Zam is finding something. Shining Hayes can't get to him, and Omar Zam scores. Omar Zam first. Three quarters of a length away. Second came Shining Hayes, then Pentas. Next over the line then was Go Steve, followed in by our best man. Next to last then was Recalcitrance, very disappointing. And last of all was Mr. Stanimar. Omar Zam, number four, ridden by Lenny Beasley, will be first. And should pay 220 and 140 here on the New South Wales tote. Number four, Omar Zam first. Shining Hayes will get second, number nine. And it should pay $4.70. And uh, Pentas, I think, will get third after the running of race six. Pentas, and uh, Pentas is number three. And we have insufficient starters for a third dividend. But the winner there, number four, Omar Zam. He's a six-year-old grey gelding by Zamoff from Poetic Bell, raced by W, Mrs. F.E. and W.A. Milligan, 
trained by Brian Guy at Rose Hill and ridden this afternoon by Lenny Beasley. In second place, number nine, there you go the numbers now, they are four, nine and three. Number nine, Shining Hayes is second, a seven-year-old brown gelding by Shining Finish from Lucent Hayes, raced by Dr. E.W. and Mrs. C. Young. Horry McCoy of Warwick Farm, the trainer, Jamie Innes, the rider. And in third place, uh, number three, that is Pentas, He's an eight-year-old now. He's an eight-year-old brown gelding by Our Planet from Ioli Spree, raced by C.E. and Mrs. P.A. Allison, M.H. Dawes and R.D. and Mrs. B.D.C. Howells. I think that's what it is, yes. Darren Beeman was the rider of Pentas, and Richard Howells, of course, was the uh, trainer. For Roma Zam, 2.30, on Super Tap, 9, Shining Hayes, 9.20, no third. 157.3 the time. Flavor. Yeah, interesting, because this crowd, you'd be pretty pleased. Oh, heaps of, heaps, of, heaps of people. Back, yeah. yeah, it's a very good crowd despite the bitterly cold wind. Glenn Hilton Donaldson is at Canberra with some more action from the mounting yard. He's Hill. Well, welcome back to Canberra on Fuji Xerox Red Nose Race Day. We have the Canberra manager of Fuji Xerox joining us now, Neil Blackley. Neil, a marvellous promotion and a marvellous involvement with the club uh, getting behind the Red Nose Race Day. Yes, thanks, Hilton. Um, we're um, enjoying ourselves out here. We've got some customers here and we're having a great time. Tell us a bit about Fuji Xerox, the company. Uh, we've been in Canberra for 35 years. Uh, we've got a staff of about 65 here and uh, um, established in Australia uh, with um, about 1,400 people and uh, obviously a pretty big organisation. The name Fuji Xerox suggests to me it's a Japanese company, would that be right? Well, it's an interesting uh, question. Uh, it's actually a partnership um, between uh, uh, Japan and America, Fuji Film and uh, Xerox Corporation. So it's a 50-50 partnership. And what does Fuji Xerox supply? Fuji Xerox supplies uh, the traditional photocopier, uh, facsimile and uh, laser printer and uh, moving into the new digital devices. So technical technological advances still happening? Absolutely, and very quickly these days. And how did the involvement with the Canberra Race Club come about? Uh, well, I, I've always liked the races and enjoyed it, and um, we um, felt that um, um, it, it, it would be a good avenue to um, use to um, um, bring our customers along and uh, they enjoy it. So we have about five days a year where we have about 50 customers out here and uh, have a terrific day. And the message is clear of course that this Friday, Red Nose Day, very important to uh, get behind SIDS. Absolutely and um, actually uh, many years ago I was um, an old uh, Apex in or, and uh, they actually uh, kicked SIDS <coughs> off many years ago mm. so it's uh, near and dear to my house. Yes. Chica race number seven, let's take it there right now. $24 at to Canberra, 15 for number two, short sheeted. Uh, then we've got $8 for Milton Magic, $10 Rio Amber, $24 for Kings Lace, Truly Diamonds at $6.10, Anita at $10, Frogmore at $14, $2.80 for number nine, which is La Soprano, uh, $16 for Pajika and Time After Time at $15. Nelson Kong riding Prince Magic Eye, having his first race ride today. Good luck to Nelson. Right, let's take it back to Hilton and uh, here he is at Canberra. Well, the leading apprentice at Canberra last year was Kevin English and Kevin joins us now on Sky Channel. He's got a couple of good rides to come, including short sheeted in race seven. How are you, Kevin? I'm not too bad, thanks. I, yeah, I've got a couple of good rides left. That short sheeted, he's getting on in age, but, but he's still very consistent. Wasn't a bad run last start and I, I think he should run along good today. What about uh, Kingston Shores in race eight from the Mike Petrovic stable? This horse had uh, quite a few city runs at the end of the two-year-old campaign and I noticed you rode the horse at it, uh, her last start or his last start. Yeah, well, I don't really know all that much about the horse yet, but I've only had the one, one start on it before and he ran along all right and with a bit of luck today, he'll, he'll do the same. He'll run along good. And, but there's always horses to beat. Like have got Sir Avalanche and, and there's a few others mm. in it, like Chitao, who's not, not um, too bad of a horse. But. Now, Kevin, you're indentured to uh, Barbara Joseph. For how long have you been riding for Barbara? Well, I've been with Barbara since I've been about 15 and a half. I left school and started working for her. And I have only been riding for the last two and a half years since I sat on a horse. So you've ne you had never ridden a horse prior to that? No, I've never ridden a horse prior to that, no. Well, Barbara must have been a great help to teach you how to ride a horse. Oh, yes, yeah, she was a great help being up Bombala in the bush. And you've got a few things for the horses to shy at, teach you to stick on a bit. So, <laughs> so there's been a few spells. Yeah, there's been a few spills. Luckily, no breaks, though. 
no breaks. I had a broken jaw when I when I first started working here, I got kicked in the mouth, but that's about it. No, I don't get any more. Things are pretty tough out Bombala way. You've got to be got to shape up or ship out. Yeah, that's about it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we wish you all the best today, Kevin, and thanks very much for joining us on Sky Channel. Thanks. I appreciate it. Good on you. Kevin English there, a real character, and uh, he's the leading uh, Canberra apprentice from last season with some good rides today in, under the uh, care of uh, Bomba La Barbara. Baroness, he's a nice little fella, isn't he? Uh, Kevin English got a bit of ability too, and uh, he's obviously handling himself very well there today. Truly Diamonds uh, for John Scorse. Row 7, number 6, Truly Diamonds. Now, for more Mounting Yard mail, let's take you to Hilton Donaldson, live trackside Canberra. Thanks, Nick. Yes, that interview recorded a short time ago. These runners are moving in at Canberra punters. They're coming in very quickly for the Fuji Xerox Open Handicap. Michael Heath's had a look at them in the yard. He's been to the betting ring. What's happening? Well, uh, La Soprano is the one on top here, um, Hilton. Uh, the speed will come from Pajika, time after time, short shooter with Matthew Carl on board. La Soprano expected to uh, get a lovely run in transit. A winner of six from 12 starts on this course, and uh, she looks well placed here, this mare, trained by John Morrissey. Hardest to beat, truly a diamond, good win at Warwick Farm, three starts back. And eight, Frogmore, been racing consistently, will be running on. All right, your numbers are 968, 968, race number seven. The starter's ready for them. Let's take it to Tony Campbell. Thanks, mate. Easy. Going well. Going well. Fuji Xerox open. Over 1,200 metres. Now they're all in. The light is on. Stand by for a start. King's Lace moving around a bit towards the inside. La Soprano stands up time after time. They settle down again. Milton Magic drawn towards the outside. Pajika stands up. Now they're set, and away they go. Our time after time was slowly away, as was Prince Magic Eye. And uh, showing a bit of speed out of the stalls was Pajika. And also going through there was La Soprano. And uh, Trilly Diamond's not too far away. And uh, Nor is a short sheeted. As they sort themselves out, Pajika leads Rio Amber second, La Soprano third. King's Lace down towards the inside, followed by short sheeted. In behind those time after time, Trilly Diamonds. Back behind those then came Prince Magic Eye. A long break in the field, Anita. Followed by Frogmore. And back towards the tail of the field was Milton Magic. As they race up towards the turn. They've got about 500 to go. Pajika leads. La Soprano running second, followed then by uh, getting up along the inside, uh, gaining a bit of ground behind those King's Lace, uh, but swinging into the straight now, and uh, Pajika's the leader. Now, La Soprano moved up on the outside. King's Lace is third, followed by Truly Diamonds running on in the grey. Rio Amber out wide is putting in a run, and further out in the track was sure cheated. Many chances, though. It's Truly Diamonds racing through to hit the lead. On the outside, Rio Amber's trying hard. It's Truly Diamonds drawing clearer of Rio Amber as they get towards the line. Trilly Diamond's too good. Trilly Diamond's draws away. Rio Amber second. Short cheated third, followed by La Soprano. In behind those, Anita ran on fairly well. Then Pajika. King's Lace was next. Further back in the field, time after time. Milton Magic never a chance. They're well back in the field. Followed then by Frogmore. And the last one across the line, Prince Magic Eye. Number six, the winner, Trilly Diamond's, written by John Scors. Trilly Diamond's, John Scors. Too good in the run to the line, trained by Keith Dryden, a five-year-old brown mare by True Version out of Sonosa, raced by GM, CV and GR Bloom, MJ Hogan, D B uh, BD Furs and E. Newen Hughes. Now the time for the race, 1.11.38, 1.11.38 and the last 636.36. But a good win there to Trilly Diamonds, trained by Keith Dryden, has now had 21 starts, seven wins, and two thirds, and we'll have more from Canberra in just a moment. Thanks a lot, Tony. Yeah, six, four, and two there, Truly Diamonds, the winner of race number seven at Canberra. And Sun and Air was one of the first out with Meccano. They land in front of Stamatina, who's hustled forward in the early stages. Sonic Sky settling fourth, and then Century Flag, Bodacious Babe, Grey Concept, followed by El Raider. Perry Como towards the end, and Shy Stead on the rail just ahead of it. Stamatina working hard to find the lead, running to the first turn. Uh, Cross down in front of Sun and Air a little tightly there. He had to ease back a bit. Moving up as Century Flag to second from Sun and Air, who's fired up after that, and he goes up on the outside of the leader. So a line of three, two lengths, Bodacious 
Audacious Babe, Meccano, great concept just behind them. They're followed then by Sonic Sky, a couple to well rated. They've gone along hard. Next, Shy Stad and two links to Perry Como. Round the turn, Stamatina, Sun and Air and Century Flag. The line of three turn into the straight together from Audacious Babe and Meccano, who sat just behind them about to pounce. And then great concept, Sun and Air, the leader. Meccano has to switch course along the rail. Wider out, Century Flag, Audacious Babe. And then great concept on the outside, clear of Sonic Sky. Sun and Air fighting back. It's Meccano taking the lead though on the inside. Here's Great Concept for the last run at the pair of them. Great Concept after Sun and Air who again got to Meccano. But Great Concept is finishing quickly now. And Great Concept and uh, Sun and Air go to the line with Great Concept just beaten. So